What a treat it is today to have my father on board, Captain B2. On the eastern end of Lake Ontario, he's known as the master. Been fishing staging king salmon for many, many years. Also, veteran Alaskan guide and first mate Bobby Helms is aboard as we catch some great examples of late season kings. We'll discuss tips and techniques, everything from the flashers that we're using to Scotty downriggers and how they're effectively used to pursue these fish in the month of September. It's all coming your way on this video. The Crown Prince has got one locked. The Crown Prince has got one locked on the uh, on the black eyed black eyed peas. Entering it in right now. He's good, isn't he, Dad? Yep. Yeah, he's come back to left. I think. I think you can reset it, I think. Got him up on top. How many feet, Bob? 192. 192. One of the things we're noticing, if you want to bring the speed down just a touch, Dad, you can. One of the things we're noticing here this morning is that uh, that break is at about, yesterday it was at 45 feet. Today it's at around 55 feet. So with a full day of south wind yesterday, it's pushing that thermocline down a little bit deeper in the water column. And... Uh, those fish this morning are holding a little deeper that's the third strike all coming off our deepest winger rod at 67 feet a little bit to the right it's a good fish coming right here dad's keeping the boat exactly where it's got to be Scotty downriggers today performing flawlessly and uh, we're going to get this fish in the bucket right here and we're going to take you to a segment to show you exactly what we have to do to set that correctly. We'll teach you what we refer to in the safe charter fleet as the dance. It's important to have the dance down. It's management of the back of the boat, how you set riggers, your spatial awareness, how you load rods. It's all part of an evolving process that helps you be more efficient uh, on the fish. Boy, this is a big shark. Big, big shark right here. Yeah, big shark. Bobby boy, we were just talking about it. When's the last time Dad cranked a fish in? When's the last time you cranked a king in? 20 years? 20 years out here. Yeah, it's a good one for Alaska's sure. Alaska's different, but that's a nice king. Yeah, big, big old shark. This is a big one. Really big. <laughs> Free <and> excessant. <laughs> Oh yeah, thank you. Oh, oh. where's the spray bottle? <laughs> get overheated. <laughs> the old man says he thinks it's a teenager, Bob. <laughs> there, I all some big teenagers out there. All, all I know is there is a lot of distance between the dorsal fin and the back of his tail. <laughs> All I can tell you for sure is he's got a weight advantage. <laughs> oh, I've got that. That's for sure. <laughs> a little bit to the right. Hey, Bob. Yeah. I don't mean to rush you, but I'm getting older. <laughs> <laughs> This is. That's good. Yeah, we're fine. We are fine. We're going to show you a cool segment too on uh, on netting when this when this fish gets in here. Some great things. Yeah, there's some great things in today's video that we're going to get to share and. Simple things, but perfecting the simple processes make it so much better and uh, so much more prepared to take advantage of every fishing opportunity that occurs. Being an experienced Alaskan guide with all kinds of time. When did you say the last time you caught a king? It's got to be 20 years up here. 20 years but. up here. <laughs> Check this out, guys. Everybody got the net minder yep. on my net right here. We're gonna get ready to. We're gonna get ready to dip this guy. Keep coming, Bobby. When he gets a little closer, I'll have you go right up the side of the boat. Okay, towards Dad. 
wind right through there, just like that. You can come and wind down again, or the stayer. Get a little, we'll get a little tighter on him, double that distance. This guy's a cherry belly, he's been on the bottom. Wind down, come to the center, wind down, wind down on him, wind down. Go, go, lower it, lower it, and wind, it'll go in. You gotta get, you gotta get that bead in there, okay? It'll That's go a through. fairly bright fish, too. Yeah, wind down. There it is, now you got it. not really it. black. Is that, watch that. Got him. Nice, nice, nice king right here. That's a big king. Big boy. Woo! Well, oh, I knew it was look. a teenager. At the size of <laughs> that. Look at the size of that fish. Nice one. Holy smokes. He is a jumbo. Big, big, big fish right there. Just absolutely gobbled up that uh, Chiquita fly. That Chiquita fly behind that uh, black eyed peas <laughs> is money here this morning. That's the third strike. That's the third strike that we've taken on that particular setup at 67 feet. There, big old male right there, kite like crazy. He was not going anywhere. Now look at where he's hooked. Check this out. Check this out. There's the octopus right here in the corner, and all the way down in the second gill raker is that number one adia. That low right there. Yeah. Perfect. I told Bob on my boat. I'd have another black eyed pea over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't know when it's going to switch right here in that Marv's fatty has been fantastic, but there is that black eyed pea that's working so great, and there's that Chiquita fly that we like so well that's got so much chartreuse in it. Bobby, let's hold that guy. Holy smokes. Look at the size of that king. I'm telling you, Dad, huh, on that fish right there, when you think of the optimal appearance that it, that a king should look like, that's what it should look like. Kipe on it, big, heavy, fat belly like that. That is just a bull fish. Great job, Robert. Good job. Let's box him out, and I'll get that reloaded. I, always, I have clients on the boat. Sometimes they want to net the fish, so I try to teach them how to do it. Now, if you've ever netted salmon or any big fish, you know you get excited, and sometimes you'll reach out with a net, and you'll actually pancake a fish on top of the net and you'll get a hook in the damn net and he'll jump and he'll be gone so what i try to teach my clients is always pin the net like this and the reason for that is this if you look off the back of the boat i've had had people take the net like this and they put it in the water and the net blows out behind the boat and when you try to net the fish they don't get them they get nothing but a lot of net and they get a hook in it so if you pin it like this and always make a head shot never make a tail shot because if you put it in front of his face and he kicks it into high gear he's going to go right in the net so if you take the net like this and it's pinned and i'm sure if you've ever fished salmon you've made the mistake of getting a hook caught in the net but primarily it's because you don't pin the net and let it fall. When a fish hits, you come to the head of it. Drive the net from the feet and let the net fall. If you put it out like this, you're trying to reach it. You see how the current takes the that. net out behind the boat? Right. And you try to net them and you end up missing them or you get their hook. So if you pin it right here and then follow around the head, you're going to catch the fish. Now, I saw something on your boat that I hadn't seen before. Hmm? And you call it a net keeper. Net, yeah, net keeper and net minder. Scotty, sure. Scotty Downriggers you makes see it. See, it's got a, yeah. it's got a rubber, it's got a rubber attachment that slides over the handle of the net. And yeah. then, and in this wonder. in this position is one of their uh, planer board clips, actually. Yep. Yep. And you hook that onto the net, and that actually takes the place with what Dad was showing you right there with the, uh, with the finger. It holds that, and the instant that net goes under the fish and any way to that fish drops into the net, it pops, boom, out of that, the basket collapses, and that fish is in the bucket. That's a neat idea. I'm going to put that on my pole, on my nets because I don't. I always pin it with my finger right. and release it and let it go. But headshot, headshot, headshot. Yeah. Never tried it. Net the same by the tail. He 
Yeah, you aren't gonna get them. <laughs> That's for sure. And that net minder, I think at seven dollars and ninety-nine cents or whatever it is, everybody ought to have one. You better believe it. Locked in battle with the master right here. We saw him come in and smoke it. Ninety percent sure we got a coho. Right here at the back. Nice. Play him over here. The one thing about fish. Play him over here. He's gonna go outside that. But I guarantee you, that fish going over here, before the plate's over, it's going to be over here. There right. he goes. Nice they fish. Do it. They always I'm going to. Nice coho. Going to the wire. Try and see if you can stop him. Wind down to him and pull him over. See if you can stop him in the wire. Good job. Keep coming. Raise that. Here, I'm telling you how to fight this fish. <laughs> That's funny. Give me some room. Can you step to your left? Yep, I'm okay. Okay. Oh. Oh. I think it's a small jack. I think. I'll wind down. We'll see. Keep coming. Wind down to him. You can wind. Back. Back. Got him. There we go. Okay, right there. It's a good thing we brought B2. Make sure we got one in the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Look everybody, wow. hold on just a second. Look everybody who we've got helping us today. The crown prince of Tupper Lake, Bobby Helms at the wheel, keeping us straight right there. Now, one thing I will tell you, and you heard me say it during that fight, and I always tell this to clients on the boat. If that fish is fighting over here, I guarantee you 99% of the time he's going to go there before he's done. Yeah. And if he's over here, he's going to be over there. So you want to be prepared to run across the boat with him. Yeah, that was perfect. And uh, I was the, right about it with Jack. Yeah, the other thing is this wire was laid right out here to the side. And what happened was that fish started to go this when way. An anchor the has the rod in a high position and that fish is going to this area. If he raises the rod to try to stop that fish, it's going to accelerate it into the direction that it's going. So what you want to do, if a fish is headed to the wire like this you want to wind down to a low purchase point then drag the fish back across to get his head to turn and bring him into the hole and that's exactly what you did right there and it laid him right did in the I do it right you did it right can you Son imagine that gun. after all these oh, years it took me 50 years of doing this <laughs> <laughs> that there's a nice jack king coming on the black eyed peas right there and that's yeah. one of our chiquita flies that he hit right there Let's get that loaded. We'll get There's that right that nice back uh, Jack King that Dad just landed. What's the story on the Jack King, Dad? Well, the Jacks, the Jacks are per, what they call precocious Jacks, and they 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 think they're mature, and they'll pick up with the bigger fish, the three-year-olds and the four-year-olds that'll try to go in, and they'll actually make the run, and they'll actually try to spawn, and they die the same as the big salmon do you would wonder why the smaller fish like this does that, but they do. Yeah. Not all of them do it. That's why we have bigger fish in three years or four years. But uh, when they're this size, now he hasn't been in here too terribly long. He's just bronze, he's just starting to turn, but he's definitely plans on making the run up the Black River and trying to spawn. When we used to fish in Black River and we'd roll up into October, a lot of the last fish that we would catch would be jacks. Yep. Because even though they're going to slip into atrophy, they uh, they degrade at a slower rate than the older fish. And what's nice about jacks, they are fun to catch. I mean, they're full of fire and when they go. Tremendous table fare. In fact, when we smoke that guy, our ice fishing customers this winter are going to enjoy that smoked jack salmon. Which end do you like? <laughs> Bobby's gonna eat it all. <laughs> we're ready to set this. We're ready to set this black IP again. So what we're doing right here is we've got a little LED light. I'm gonna turn that on. You can pick these up for about $4.99 at uh, Harbor Freight. I'm gonna glow both sides of that plate just a little bit, just to give it a faint glow. Shut that off. I checked my Chiquita fly. They're ripping, the t they're ripping the tinsel right out of that would cost so many kings. But a lot of times when those flies get stripped down like that, I'll keep running them because those kings are, those kings are liking it. 
So we're going to drop this in the water. We've checked our terminations and our knots. <clears throat> we're going to drop this back about 25 or 30 feet in a tail gunning position. Now what I do is I'm setting this outside down rigger. I put the rod in this holder. I keep everything, I keep everything downstream of the set. And the reason is, if I'm working with the rod up here, I can get tangled. If another rod goes, watch what watch what happens if another rod goes. These boys just land these boys just landed a salmon right here on, uh, on, on lots of limits. So if I'm working in this condition right here and I start to wind this up to set it in the downrigger, another rod hits. Look what happens. I can leave it, go right to another rod, and I don't have to worry. It's all downstream of the sack. So we'll pull that flasher in, we're going to put it in position. We set it in a rod holder downstream of the sack. Now what we're going to do, if you're right-handed, you're going to wrap it in your right finger. I'm going to put five or six twists in there. Now I transfer it to the left finger. I bring the weight and the winger to the surface. Now what I do is what I refer to as one, two, three. If you're right-handed, you're gonna start with the right hand. One, two, three. You get the back side of that black's release. You get the black's back side of that black's release, you put the line in, push it in. One, two, three rod goes into the waters. Just that simple. You're not fighting it. You're not trying to cradle it. You're not wrapping your arms around. You just simply pick it up. One, two, grab it, clip it in. One, two, three, and you gently ease that weight back into the water. Once it's here, hold it with a, with a quick rod and drag off. And we're going to slowly pull this handle back, which free clutches the, free clutches the rigger. If you look in here at the rigger, all that is is a belt that goes around there with a counter. It's simple, so you're not using any energy off the batteries in your boat because you're free clutching that belt and you're letting the rigger down. This is at 67 feet, so we're going to go to 67 feet. We walk it in slow, engage the reel, put it, because we held it under pressure as it went down, we've got very little to do to tighten the set of that rod and have it prepared to take the next fish. That's the main thing that I notice when I'm watching other people set. They do it loose and then they're cranking 42 miles a line out of it. When we're working fast in the boat, we set that quick. We ride it with our thumb as it goes down. As soon as it hits bottom, we tighten the clutch up. Boom, we're already 99% of the way into the set the way it should be. Look at him go across the back. Smoking, smoking, Jesus. smoking. Look at him go. Okuma cold water and just flying. Flying, flying, flying. That's what it's like. How deep are we, Dad? Come to the right just a little bit. Give me right to 65, 70 if you can. I'm going to try to see what we got right here. How deep? He's way out center. You're good. 70 feet. Right. 70 feet. Look at the fish right here on the GPS map series. I'll pull down. You see them. those kings are really streaking so, right here on the bottom. They're lining right out. Yeah, they're lining right out. It's right. Right up on the top. Look at him go. Oh, yeah. Big old fish. Big old fish. He is rocking and rolling. The crown prince of Tupper Lake is locked up again. He went for it. We just switched another eyeball man on with a glow panel trying to get close to that black eyed piece. Now that fish, Bobby, how far did he take it out? I know you were looking at the counter. He went out fast. Yeah, he went out quick. He get out over 300, did he? Oh, uh, just shy. Just shy. What do you got him into now? I'm at 80 now. 80 feet, Dad. 80 feet right straight out the center. We got everything pulled in. We pulled this uh, shoe flasher, this Michigan Stinger shoe flasher right here. Been so hot and deadly for us this white with a green edge. <clears throat> running a meat combination and then of course is uh, big white running down the center with one of our uh, BSO Twinkie flies there with P-line squids and a nice Reese Davis head. Good fish, this is another good one here Bob. Yeah. Yeah, just, uh... <clears throat> Beautiful fish.
One of the things that uh, Bob did there is he cracked the drag on that Okuma cold water, let that fish run. In an effort to burn all the piss and vinegar off that fish out there two, uh, 300 feet away from the boat. So when he comes in, he's not green and it's a more manageable fish for us. Now we're set up. I'm going to film and net here and you can see I've got my, uh, my net minder right there, my net keeper. Um, from Scotty set right up so it's holding that basket open looking pretty good dad yeah it is real big fish he's doing a he's spinning it looks like another one of those Bobby, giant your left let's try to kill him in the center if we can keep coming to the left so I can get in between you and the fish yeah okay yeah I'm ready when you are let's you're gonna wind down into that thing like I showed you before. Now this time lower and wind, but yeah, you went right past the field. Wind down one more time. Big giant the male. That back oh, raise his head, raise his head, raise his head. Raise his head, I can't see him. And you perfectly let into the basket. That was a piece of work. Perfectly let. Look at the size of this man. Oh, that one's a lot darker. Holy smokes. That fish right there. That fish, that fish right there is going to push 40, 41 inches, Bobby. I thought he, you were going to say pounds. I was going to say you're crazy. No, now. he is an absolute <laughs> giant. Look how long he is. Look how big and fluked out that tail is. Just an absolute jumbo. Tone him out, Bob, before he wrecks gear on us here. Hit him one more time. There Look we go. Look at the way they have mauled that yeah, Chiquita fun, fly. Man. I do. I got him all the way through, all the way through, just skin with the octopus hook, and he's in the second gill raker. He's in the second gill raker right there with that Adia number one, which is such a good double strength hook. There's the there's the black eyed peas that we're catching that on. To get the net out of the road here. There we go. To talk about on? just a dude of a king. That thing is a, yeah, he's been in here a little while. He's an absolute stud of a fish. What a great YouTube video, Bob, that we've got today. I mean, we're just getting some beauties. All the tips on netting from Dad, the tips on setting the Scotty downriggers. And uh, here it is, you know, you see so much where it's, oh, we got to run copper. We got to run wire. We got to do all these different things. We got to run you know, meatball rods or thumper rods. And here it is. If you get the downrigger set right, you get them spread with a winger so that there's room for those mature fish to move around. And you've got the opportunity to kill a lot of fish using a great downrigger pattern. Yep. Good job today, buddy boy. Appreciate it. Dad, thank you. Hey. Worked out well. That was fine. Box oh. that king in the box that king in there too. Wait a minute, where's mine? It's an early morning <laughs> quickie just to get a nice video in the can. And We're now, three for, five. three for five, but it's time for eggs. It's time for eggs. Huh? It's time for eggs. Time to go for eggs. Time to go for eggs? That's it. Time to go for chicken eggs. Chicken eggs. Time to go for eggs. Let's wrap that black eyed pea up. Look at that BSO fly. Just murdered. That Chiquita. I think I think that flasher's due for a new fly. What do you think? Yeah. We've only we've only caught about 30 kings on that one. That's the way it's going with the safe charter fleet.